I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3. And I want to read one verse. And I'm just going to try to talk to you tonight, preach to you a little bit on these riches and the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 8 says, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. I looked at word unsearchable. It means untraceable. It means that it can't be tracked out. It means past finding out. It means that it can't be searched or exploited. It's hidden and it's mysterious. What God has done for you and what God has given you the day, the hour that He saved you, there is nobody on planet earth that can explain that to you to where you could feel satisfied with it. And with that, I want to preach on this thought on the unsearchable riches of Christ. Uh, I never have, never, ever, ever in my life did I enjoy one day at school. Not one. I hated it from the time I started to the time I left. I don't know why anybody would want to be a school teacher. But if you are, praise God for you. But the, the Word of God, the Bible says about the Word of God, that is one of the greatest wealth that this world has ever known. This is the greatest book that's ever been written. When I was in school and I did not, uh, <laughs> this not be good for our children, I did not experience much reading if I didn't have to. If I did read, it would be Louis Lamar. And if for those of you that haven't stooped to that low, it's Westerns. <laughs> That's what I would spend my time reading. It never changed my life. I can't even remember not one title to any of those books. But I want to tell you tonight, I hold in my hand, I have before me the Word of God. And this book right here has changed my life. From an 18-year-old boy who was raised in the hills of eastern Kentucky that God was only a name given and usually a name to be taken in vain, but this book has changed my life. For the Word of God is sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. I want to tell you, this book cuts going in, it cuts coming out. But let me say this, this book not only cuts, this book cuts comforts. The Bible if you're down in the dumps brother Josh, this Bible if you get in it, it will comfort your life. I want to say I don't care who you are, you're going to come to a point in your life to where you're like boy this is a rough day here and when you have those rough days this book right here will comfort you it comforts me to know that one day brother Phil the God of glory is going to step out on the cloud and he's going to call us up out of here what a comfort this is not the end of the story this is not how it ends it does not end with me down and defeated it does not end with me discouraged it ends with me descending into the clouds with my Savior because this Bible is such a precious gift to us amen amen uh, I heard a story about the Koran and how they handled the Koran. They said when they handle the Koran, the Koran, it comes out in a wooden box. And the people that handle it have on white gloves. They wash their hands before they put the, the gloves on. And they walk over and open the box and take the Koran out. That book is not going to help them. Right. That book is going to leave them high and dry and they'll be lost for brother, every day, Brother Clint, for the rest of their life and spend eternity. And we take this book for granted. Uh, if we would admit it, we spend more time flipping through television than we do with the book. Uh, we spend more time. I, I, it discourages me 
uh, when I go to, which we don't go very often, but when we do, you'll see a family of four. They don't talk to each other. They're on their phone. Yep, sure. What a blessing to be in that family. Right. Y'all down like you're all part of that family. <laughs> you know, I've been reading this book this week the book of Genesis and one thing I left brother Josh you know what I found out out of the book of Genesis every family is messed up yeah. sure. you know that brother Josh right. every family from Adam and Eve they're messed up right. Right. Uh, I mean the way they treat each other uh, you've got moms and dads siding with one, one child and the dad sides with the other child and, and it's just mass chaos right. And you've got women giving their maid to their husband. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? But that's this book. And that's where we can learn from. You say, well, that's horrible. But I want to tell you, that is the way it was. Right. And God didn't spare that and say, well, we're just going to... If, if man would have wrote that, we would have took Genesis. We would have took all that out of there. We wouldn't have let that happen. All of our parents would have been great parents. All of our kids would have been great kids. We wouldn't have had Cain who would have killed our, his brother. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have talked about him. But this book here is so great that God says, I ain't covering up nothing because when this thing is said and done and we're in glory, they're going to be there. Noah the drunk. Huh? You say, that's horrible. The only reason you ain't is by the grace of God. Huh? Huh? Some of us don't really realize what we're capable of. Huh? <laughs> we would never be one who would kill somebody, murder, mass murder, or serial killer. We could, it's only by the grace of God that none of us are like that. You don't ever take any credit for you sitting in here in this pew. This is not you. This is the Bible that made it possible for you to be here. It's the Bible. Word of God. Thank God for somebody who told me that there was a way out of this mess. It's because that a fellow by the name of Brother Adam Hayes who preached the Bible and I got saved because of what he said about this book. This book has been attacked how come they don't attack the NIV? Yeah. Why? Because this is pure. Uh, the, even the church don't like pure things. Huh? Y'all getting quiet, I'm just saying. It's just the truth. Uh, as a whole. But thank God for the Word. Amen. What about God's love? Think about it. What manner of love Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Amen. What a privilege. How could God love somebody like me? Huh? Amen. God does some of the strangest things. The king of all kings does something that most kings never do. He does take hostages and he converts them to family members and that is not what the kings of this earth does they annihilate those whole families so they do not have any inheritance in the kingdom but God will by his grace will take some slobbering foaming at the mouth drunk some whoremonger that will not serve him and he'll put them somewhere and so one of his children God will send that person to somebody like that and they'll get gloriously saved put them in the church call that person to, to, to sing call that person to, to preach the gospel and you know what he takes them into his family what love I don't understand it. I, I want to be this and I hope you don't take this wrong but you probably will there's no way I would take my son and put him on the cross for any of you. Amen. Uh, I wouldn't do it. I've got three grandsons. I love all of them. I would not crucify them the way God did his son so you could sit here tonight. I couldn't do it. Why? Because I don't love you that way. I don't have the capacity in my heart to love uh, Brother Phil enough to where I could redeem his soul from hell. Right. But God does. Yeah. 
Huh? God, God will look in ahead of time. And Jesus said, I'll go farther and go to the cross of Calvary and suffer so that Phil could come and play the guitar, go to the jail and preach his gospel. I don't understand love like that. I don't comprehend that. The FBI couldn't find out an answer for that. The CIA couldn't come up with some kind of conclusion why God loves wicked people. Right. You say, well, I was always in church. It don't matter. You still need to be saved. Right. Jesus, you don't matter how many times you go to church. This ain't about church. Right. No matter how good your mom and daddy. You know, my dad, God rest his soul, I love him. He, he never knew God. He cussed his name till the day he died. But you know what? You may have had a good mom and daddy that brought you to church, but you still had to get saved. You may not ever. The worst kind of flesh in the world is religious flesh. Do you know? Jeffrey Dahmer is not going to be in the hottest part of hell. It's that religious Pharisee. Huh? He's a twofold child of hell. Huh? These riches that God has in store for us. How that God, the next time you think, well, God don't love me. Have you ever said that? Have you ever thought that? You ever been through something that drove you to a point to where you said, if God loved me, he wouldn't do this to me. Mm. God still keeps loving. He still keeps loving. Huh? You ever had your kids break your heart? Just wait long enough. They'll break your heart. And you know what you'll do? You'll keep loving. That's the way God is. God has a love that cannot be found out. You cannot search it out. You know what? When you get in heaven, Brother Clint, you know what you're going to find out? I still don't understand this. Because God's love is so massive and so great. Huh? You know what, uh, Brother Ed, you know what really gets me? Is that we have literally thousands of people that stand day after day after day on the public national television and cuss God's name. And God gives them grace. I want to say this to you. If that was me, they'd know I was God. Huh. They'd know it. Because I'd send lightning. They would, the world would be on national television. They would know. That, that was strange right there. I would send lightning right through the ceiling. and They'd say, God had they, they got to be somebody. But God ain't like that. He gives them another day because He loves them. He does love them with a love that is uncomprehendable. You can't even imagine how God cares for us. But the first time you go through something, you'll say, Wow, I wish I wished I knew that God cared about me. And I want to say this, we are living in an age where love is kind of a it's kind of messed up. Because it's a love that has no responsibility. What I mean by that is this it allows people to do whatever they want to do and still say you love them. No. I'm gonna tell you something, folks. Love changes your heart. Love changes your life. It changes the way you respond to people. People that love one another. I, I will give you a rather crude demonstration of what I was told by a fellow I worked with many years ago. He was a womanizer. And he womanized with every woman in that factory. And I had enough nerve back then. I was young and I didn't really care. I said, Mo, his name was Morris, we call him Mo. I said, Why? How do you go home? He said, This is not love. I'm like, Well, what you have with your wife ain't love. 
Because if it was, you wouldn't do her that way. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Love causes you to be responsible to the ones that you say you're in love with. That's what God does. God will not let you go astray and just wander around out here. We're living in a day where people say, I love my kids so I won't make them behave. No, you don't. Because if you did, you'd get the paddle out. Uh, I've got one rule at my house. Even for My kids are over 40. And I've got grandkids. I have one rule that you won't break. You disrespect my wife, I will bust you up. I will bust you up. You say, well, that's not nice. Yeah, you're right. They shouldn't do that. I will not tolerate that. No. Folks, I'm trying to tell you, we're living in a day when this word love is thrown. It's all nothing more than just lust. Right. What a wealth. How in the world can you say anything about God's love and feel like you've done it justice. You know, what is the depth, the height, the width of God's love? Huh? I mean, you can't even comprehend it. It's beyond our imagination that God... You know, God give us this good place to come. The church, have a good pastor. Do you know, Brother Josh, how many people don't have a good pastor? i got to watch when I step because these glasses mess me up. I'll be in your lap. How many people don't have a good church like we have? Amen. The good young people that we have Amen. in this church? Amen. Amen. A good pastor? Huh? I was telling a fellow, he was asking me about a church in our area. He's looking for a church. He said, what about such and such? I said, well, I am not going to say for you not to go there. But I want to tell you from the experience that my wife had at that church. This was the invitation at their revival. This has been 30 years ago. Could have changed, but I doubt it. This is their invitation. Come to the altar and shake the preacher's hand and you'll be saved. No truth in that. Uh, God, get us have this church have each other great children this this has been a this just didn't happen overnight this is something that's been taking place for years if you take it for granted you might lose it overnight what about that the love of god what about god's grace what a rich well, how rich is God's grace, God's unmerited favor? And we go around and try to figure out how we can explain it. How can you explain something that's past uh, explaining? Right. You want somebody who didn't like school to explain to you the grace of God? That's not fair. Huh? And it's not even fair if you go get somebody who's got all these letters behind their name and they're doctors of this and that and the other and he could give you some kind of philosophy, philosophy on the grace of God and you'll go away just as dumbfounded as you was before. But I want to say this, this is God being good to you when you don't deserve it. God looking over you, taking care of you in spite of your ways. In spite, see, you might pull the wool over my eyes, come here smile and act like you're all holy. But you know what? God sees inside of our life. He knows what you are. Uh, God knows. He knows what you are. He knows what you think. That's what the Bible says. It's a thought about His Word. His, the thoughts uh, of our hearts, you know. Intense. The Word of God. You know, I mean, you just think about this, this grace, God's... It's 167 times. Evidently, God's trying to ring it in across our mind. You know, if you think about it, the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, the Bible says about Ruth, Ruth found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Right. And that's what it says about Josh. Josh found eyes in the Lord. A guy who was religious, going to church, and nobody thought nothing was wrong with you. That's from your own lips. That's not from my lips. That's from you. You know what God did? He let you get so much grace to where you could not resist Him no more and say, Hey, I'm not saved. Hey. Right? That's God's grace. 
Huh? I, I love talking to Brother Donald when he tells me about the Catholic Church. What a, what a, just to think, talk, talk about how that God, here's a guy who was searching even in the Catholic Church for help, and they couldn't help him. How could they? They don't know God. God led him by accident. Think about it, by accident. No, by divine intervention. Run into one person. God only needs one. Huh? Huh? Let this man right here run into somebody that changed his life. Got him out of dry, dead religion. Serving God. What is that? That's God's grace. God going. You know, I don't understand how God does things. Why he does the way he... God will send his people to places and they will literally... I, I, was, I wish I could remember this fellow's name and where he was going, but this guy had given his heart to be a missionary somewhere over in the, <clears throat> over in the f- far country. He never made it to the church. The people he was going to, to be a missionary to, murdered him. Do you you know God knew that? Yeah. We don't. Huh? He went. They even told him the people that sent him said, "If you go, you're probably not going to live." God put it on my heart, and I'm going. He never even made it there. Why would God do that? Because years later, the biggest church in that area, where that guy was going someone else went and they said because of that guy folks I want to tell you something I can't understand his grace all I know is this the Bible says being justified by grace it's not by what all I do huh? there's a kind of a to me there's a, a misconception of this thing of salvation there's this thing called salvation that's true but then there's people who are liberal what that means is they have no no restraint but then there are those who are legalists who says you're saved by works I don't believe either one of those I believe the one that's in the middle. The cross that Jesus is standing on. Mm-hmm. Salvation by God's grace. Right. God's grace is beyond our comprehension. Amen. You ever think about this? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Hey. Right. The word Holy Ghost is found in the Bible 90 times. Holy Spirit is found 23 times. Do you know the advantage of us having the Holy Spirit compared to the Jews having Jesus? You don't have to go nowhere. To meet with Jesus, you had to go wherever He was. They followed Him. But Jesus said, when I go away, He said, I'll send you a comforter. You know what? You go home tonight, He'll be in the car. He's out there right now waiting on you. Actually, He's in your heart. He's going to walk you out to the car and get you in the car and when you get in the car the Holy Spirit is going to go with you all the way home and when you lay down tonight the Holy Spirit what a blessing the Holy Spirit is I cannot tell you what a wonderful thing he, He's a real person He's not an it or a thing huh? because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit can be grieved you can't grieve a thing or an it but you can grieve people. And the Holy Spirit gets grieved when we don't do what He tells us to do. When we don't walk like He... Have you ever heard this? And this I hate this saying. You need to act like a Christian. No, you don't need to act like no Christian. You need to be a Christian. Right. Huh? Yeah. Leave acting for Hollywood. Be, be a Christian at this church and be one at your job wherever you go. You need to be a Christian. Not, don't act like one. Huh? That means you're a hypocrite. If you're acting... The Holy Spirit, He teaches us. You know what the Holy Spirit will do? He'll do whatever this book says. If if, If somebody tells you to do something and it's not found in this book and the Holy Spirit don't give you the okay on it, don't do it. Hmm? 
The Holy Spirit, what a gift. What a, what a, a gift that you can't search out because He talks with me. You ever talk to you? Amen. Have you ever said anything to you? If you don't, you're not His. Huh? You ever do anything wrong? Anybody ever guilty? I, I do it about every day. I do pretty good while I'm asleep. But after that, it goes downhill real quick. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you wake up, I do real good until it comes time to get out of bed. But the Holy Spirit, He talks with me. He, he comforts me. You ever notice He directs you? The Holy Spirit does. You know, one of the things I think is sad is when you try to direct your own life. How could someone who don't know one day from the next be able to direct their own life? When the Holy Spirit knows what's happening tomorrow. He knows what car you need to drive. He knows where you need to live. And He knows where you need to go to church. He knows who you need to marry. Don't pick a, a husband or a spouse just because. You need to pick one because God's got His stamp of approval. on It'll last. Huh? Marriages last that God has put them together. The Holy Spirit. Think about the Holy Spirit, how He does His work. You ever think about one of the things that I thought that was a blessing? That the glory of God To see God's glory come down. We're living in a day, Brother Phil, where churches are dead and dry. And they like it like that. They like dry services. They like dry preaching. They like dry singing. But the glory of God shows up and it messes their day up. Amen. When we used to say this, and we, I still say it when it gets on in the building, yeah. when God shows up and you just can't help yourself, yeah. right. and you get the, a good case of the I can't help it, and you stand and weep and shout and cry, and you give God all the glory He's due to Him. We ought to thank God that every now and then that the Holy Spirit gets to move it around in this place and the glory of God shows up in this place. The Bible tells us that, the, that Jesus was made flesh and He dwelled among us and we beheld His glory. His glory. Yes. I want to tell you, I, I thought one of the greatest things that I, is when John was on the Isle of Patmos and he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice. He said, and I turned to see. And he begins to describe... Why did John see Jesus in the form that he was? Because the glory of God was there. Hey. Amen. Why is the church not seeing his glory? Because he don't come. Because they don't want him. They've got their, their little whatever, they knickknacks, all their little stuff, that their little plays and games and all that, that they want. But they don't want to see God move. Without a moving of God, we'll never have revival. The glory of God showing up. I could imagine when John turned and he saw this person named Jesus and he begins to describe him. Folks, I want to tell you, there is something about him that exceeds all others. When you see him, you'll know it's him. You know, I want to close with this thought right here. I want to close with one of the greatest gifts that God has ever given us. It's the gospel. Amen. Amen. Do you know without the preaching of the gospel, none of us would ever get saved? Paul right. said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. You know what the gospel is? The death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. First, First Corinthians 15. You know what? The gospel is so important. He said in Galatians, he said, he talked about people that would pervert the gospel. Now, you know what I think is amazing? Is a mama and daddy would not have a pervert around their kids, but they'll let a church pervert 
train their kids. Right? You wouldn't let a pervert babysit your kids when they was little. Why would you let a church pervert, one who perverts the gospel and says that there's no such thing, you've got to do this and you've got, you got to be baptized or you've got to, uh, you, you got to do this and you've got to do that. You've got to work your way to heaven. You'll never make it, my friend. Right. It's the gospel. What a, what a great gift the gospel is to us that we can just believe. Yeah. I want to say this in closing. I'm glad. I'm glad that it does not depend on me to get to heaven. Because if it did, I would never make it. Because number one, I'm not that good of a person. I know me better than you do. I know these thoughts in this head. And how hard sometimes it is to suppress them and to keep them under control. Uh, See, God's not going to judge you by everything that you do. He's going to judge you by your thoughts and all that is in your heart. But because of the gospel, by grace, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, what a prayer, what a gift that God has given us that we cannot even describe. That's why people miss it. It's so clear. And it's, you know, from the dawn of time, everybody wants to go to heaven, but they do not want to go God's way. That's why they... Uh, Adam and Eve sold fig leaves together. That was their gospel of works. Amen. Hmm? Amen. That's why Cain brought fruit and vegetables. That's his, that was his salvation by works. On down through the history of time, right up until two, 2024, when people say, if you'll behave yourself and you'll be good. Have you ever noticed the people that tell you to behave, they're not behaving? Mm. Amen. Uh, Amen. I want to tell you something I have never seen so many people big country stars that get on there and talk about the Bible I want to say this in closing I, I, I'm not going to judge nobody as far I, I can't judge them but I think it's strange most of you men know Hulk Hogan Do you know that Hulk Hogan has made a profession of salvation? Great. I'm, I'm hoping so. But do you know that Hulk Hogan has come out with his own brand of beer? Huh? Uh, that just don't seem right to me. Amen. Huh? Does that seem right to you, Brother Josh? Am I, am I, if I'm off, go ahead and tell me. I won't get offended by it. But it just seems, Brother Tony, that something ain't right when a person gets saved. When I got saved, all of that stuff was gone. I, I, I don't even think about that junk no more. Why? Because I got saved. The gospel that I'm preaching changes your life. It does not allow you to stay the same way. Uh, this, these people who talk about, get on there and talk about it, uh, these moral issues, of, and they, they're, they're actually, they are against the immorality that's in the White House, but they're not totally sold out to the spirituality of salvation. Right. What I mean by that is this, I'm going up to here, and that's as far as I'm going. Yeah. I'm hanging on to my booze, I'm hanging on to my little, my little cuss words, I'm not going to say the real bad cuss words, but I'm right up to this point. There's something wrong with that kind of gospel. The gospel that changes, it saves, it changes. It causes someone who's a liar to quit being a liar. Amen. Y'all quiet. I'm just saying. Amen. I'm not saying the man ain't saved. I'm just saying something's wrong. There's something wrong with that kind of salvation. Huh? I have the same rule for my kids. What applies to one applies to the other. And God's the same way. He's not going to let. He's not going to tell Phil to quit smoking, cussing, and drinking, and let Hulk Hogan do it just because he's a big time wrestler. Right. Ain't happening. Hey. Ain't going to happen. You might believe that. You say what well, he said. Ain't about what he said. Right. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruits. You'll know them by their works. Amen. If a person still keeps working for the devil, you know what he is. He's for the devil. I'd feel a whole lot better about him I am closing if he would just say hey I ain't, I ain't part of that hey. 
Folks, I want to tell you something. God has done some great things, and he's given us some great stuff. And I'm going to, I'll be honest with you, I know I ain't done a very good job at telling it to you, but I've done the best that I could do. And there's many, many, many more things that God has given you to enjoy in life. Just don't feel like you're getting ripped off. Huh? Because our televangelist, they have said, Brother Josh, if you'll send me $100, a, a, what do they call that? A seed of faith. Huh? If you'll send that, God will bless you tenfold. So tenfold, that'd be a thousand bucks. I'd like to have a thousand bucks. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Hmm? Now, I want, let, me, let me show you how this is going to work. You're not going to get the thousand dollars, and you're going to be a hundred dollars shorter. Huh? Story, and I'm leaving or stopping. I seen uh, Kenneth Copeland, the richest preacher in America, a billionaire. He collects watches. I'm thinking this is right. They're called Bricklands. They're four to ten thousand dollars a piece. The 37th Bricklin watch he got was given to him by a man planting a seed of faith, but it was not a watch. It was a clock in a Bentley. The clock itself is $70,000. And this man gave him this car with this clock because he was dying of cancer. Two and a half months later, they buried him. So evidently, that don't work. Huh? That's a lie. Folks, I want to tell you, what we have here today, far more than what you believe. Far more than what I could tell you about. Let's stand to our feet, Brother Josh, you come. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.